Oh. Hi, I'm Christian. Welcome to Lazy Devs Academy. Today we're marking a road like still. Mm. Oh, look at this. It's pretty good. We're having stuff happening. I like it. Okay. So what I want to do today is I want to spawn our items. We uh, we've been postponing this for such a long time, but I think it's 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 we should um, slowly get to the items. But before we do, we let's post postpone one last time. Remember how we have like the curve sick and curve mask here? Yeah, we need to, we need to we need to change this. So I um I already did that thing in the background where I went through um this um this process that we outlined in the previous episode. I'm not I don't remember which one, where um, we basically printed out using a Pico 8 pre-printed those numbers into a text file, and that also converts numbers to um, the binary numbers into uh, into digital numbers. And so <clears throat> this allows us to use the explode function on those as well. It's not a big deal. If you don't want to do it, um, you can copy either those numbers or just never do it. And that's, it won't save that many tokens, but just a few tokens. Why not? I may be going back to the mobs. I was wondering if we can maybe um, save some tokens by like defining some of the because this is kind of like a very loosey goosey kind of uh, function that we have here. The this pop, where is it? Where's the mob spawning? Spawn mobs, there we go. Yeah, like the, with the way we define them into individual lines, we could put uh, define them in one line, but on the other hand, I kind of want to have to be able to manipulate those on uh, those arrays easier. So I'm not sure. Um, yeah, let's just, just keep it around, whatever. Okay, so today we are going to do uh, chests and items. And these are kind of like are two separate problems or two separate um, topics. Um, first, spawning chests and then uh, how to get the right items. Let's just start with the chests. <clears throat> so I want to spawn chests, um, but I want the spawning of the chests to be kind of like separate from the spawning of, um, of like of the decoration of the rooms, because I think each room deserves potentially to have a chest. Um, so I, after we spawn the mobs, I would also, uh, or maybe even before we do it, yeah, we do before we spawn the mobs. We do spawn chests. Um, what does spawn chest do? Generally, most of the time, we just want to have one room to be kind of like, be like, yes, you are going to be the chest room and it will spawn a chest inside this room. Um, something like this. So just one room will have a chest. I kind of like tried, um, I, did, I experimented with prototype a little bit, and usually uh, the more, like having more than one chest per room um, makes the game like really, like you have to tweak the, number, the, the items a lot. It's, it becomes very much about item management and less about you know, playing the game. Uh, and also it makes the chests special because like, oh, this is the chest room. <gasps> I found it. Um, we do have a little bit of a leeway though because we do have the big chest. That's kind of like, it's gonna be the one chest basically. But sometimes we only have, we also have like the small chest. So we might sometimes spawn more chests and only one will be the real chest and some of them will be the small chest. And also we want to get items when we break the vases. So this will give us some in uh, some some way of getting the different items, but you know just one really big item each room. Now these items, I, like the way I I came up with like this gameplay thing is like these big chests will comp contain rare items that will be the weapons and the armor. These are going to be the rare items, and all of the other chests, the smaller chests and the vases will not contain the weapons and the, the armor. They will only contain food and throwable items, like the consumable items. Um, that way, like the big chests are really precious because, like, oh, it will actually upgrade me. Note that our game doesn't really have experience points, so we're not don't, not going to get better by killing monsters. I generally don't like that mechanic. Um, so the only way for, up, for us to upgrade our our character is to actually find those chests. It's a bit bad, 
because you know you, you might get situations where we uh, where we never find those chests or the chests don't really spawn conveniently or the items that we get in those chests are never going to increase our attack power all of these are possible but i think like allowing for bad runs for like really bad luck to happen is kind of fine in in roguelikes i don't think you have to be able to win every seed uh, I think sometimes it, everything will go south, and I think that's okay. Generally, if you give players enough agency within the game, they won't mind sometimes having like really bad luck. Um, so it's really more about not really about tw tweaking the the chances so that that every every playthrough turns out to be the same, but more about uh, making sure that players have enough agency within the system to kind of like feel as if they're um, if they're not just like at the whims of the procedural generation. All right, so we're gonna go through a similar process to when we, that we had when we uh, place the monsters, in that we will have a pot of rooms, the R pot, the room pot. And then we're gonna pick random uh, rooms from that pot, and then we're gonna place some chests in there. That way we make sure that if we place multiple chests, we're never gonna place, um, you know, a chest multiple times like multiple chests in one room i don't want to have multiple chests in one room i don't think that that's that's healthy for us yeah so let's let's just um, for for once for the beginning let's make it so that we only place one chest just one chest so we're going to do something like um, um local r equals get rund r pot and then we're going to have a function that will take care of the chest place chest r and then, um, I mean, we could delete the, the pot here, but we're placing just one here. So just like, we're just gonna have a very bare bones structure here. And this is gonna be the function responsible of picking the right uh, spot for the chest to spawn. Now, this is a bit of an issue. The right spot for the chest to spawn, hmm. So we're going to use again a very similar function that we had above here, a very very similar place here where we placed minions randomly somewhere on the on the map. We are going to use kind of like the same pattern here. Uh, we're just going to pick a like a walkable spot and we're going to place the, the chest in there. Just for now. Um, okay. Except we're not picking like a like a random thing on on somewhere. We're just gonna pick a random spot from this individual room. Let me actually sp split them apart into individual steps, so you see what's happening here. Just you know, random. This is now a uh, place somewhere in the, in the map. We're not gonna check for the mobs because the mobs don't exist at this point. We are first spawning the chest, then the mobs. But we're gonna go if um, t get an m get x until uh, x y if that equals one if we find a spot that is like pristine a pristine spot again there's no decorations at this point so we can do that uh now the 16 has to be changed here a little bit so let me see what what are the what is this um aha uh -huh. so it's going to be like r dot x plus um room dot width and r dot y plus room dot height um and then when we found it of course we're gonna go um and set x y and we're gonna place the big chest so that's gonna be 12. and that's gonna be it let's see how this works it doesn't work at all Oh, that's not how it works. Silly me. Let's try that. It gets a nil value. Attempt to get a length of local R and nil value. Where is that? Get rind. Okay, so we're trying to get something from a from Aha, so here in the R pot. We're not getting, ah, got it. Okay, so we immediately see a problem here that the chest spawn, <laughs> I, I love it. Oh, uh, there's a prescription, Kirkus Maximus. Hi, Kirkus Maximus. <laughs> 
<laughs> I love the pre-recorded subscriptions. So we see a chest was spawn at the entrance of this level. That's bad. That's something that we don't want to actually happen. So uh, we want to maybe make sure that there is no door nearby until m get equals one and uh, not. We have a function for this next to tile 13. That was kind of like if we're next to a door. Ah, <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I just copied it over and I was expecting this to work. <laughs> I'm, that's very bold of me, I would say. Some would call it bold, other people would call it something different. Okay, so now we see the chest spawn over there. That's good. This is good. This is good spawn location for a chest. This is good. Now, I'm not sure if this is good. Okay. I don't really like so much if the chests are spawning in the corners, to be perfectly honest. Oh, there's some problem. So there is a bit of an issue here happening. Um, I'm sometimes, it seems like we're getting into an infinite loop. And I'm not exactly sure why. It's also difficult to reproduce. See, now, infinite loop. The, the, the game is not responding. Mm. Weird. Um, so I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna try to figure this out. I'm thinking that maybe we're not finding the right spot. So just to debug this. So I'm thinking maybe um, the program tries to place too many monsters, maybe in a room. And the room is full of monsters now and, and there is no way to fill even the room with even more monsters. That's something I, I would be considering that is the issue now. And us, actually we didn't add an important aspect to the monsters, the, the way we do the monsters placement. And that's something that might be a good um, opportunity to fix now. So when we infest a room, the way we figure out how many monsters we place is a bit random. Like we could place up to five monsters and that not necessarily, not necessarily have like the space to place those monsters. So um, let me see, how did I do last time around? Something I did is I calculate the size of the room, a local R size. And then um, I did, a, I equated to RW times R H. That's kind of like the area of the room. And then the target, how many we want to be placing, is gonna be um, two plus floor random R size divided by six minus one. That was my, <laughs> my thing. So generally the idea is that we divide the size of the room by six um, and we subtract one from it after one, after we do, do that. So, um, and it's kind of like something I kind of like tweaked around, but this is kind of like, I think a good number of mobs and the bigger the room, the more mobs you may place in that room. At least two monsters. I don't think um, placing less than two monsters makes sense. Um, but you know, typically you, you could even put even more in there. And, and also I put a cap on the amount of monsters. So then I, I do something like, um, target equals min five num. So more than five monsters per, per room uh, is not gonna gonna happen, no matter how big the room is. Just so we're not getting like like huge uh, amount of monsters getting spawned in a room. That's kind of something that I did here. Mm, let me see. I think I can grab this part and just put it in here. Just mm, that will save us a variable that we don't need. Might be worthwhile. Um, yeah. And we can put those here. So let's see if maybe that solves the problem. Not in the slightest, that's even worse even. <laughs> Oh, 
I know the problem. Yeah, when we're adding a mob, <laughs> this is actually a leftover. So when we're adding a mob here, with when the mobs overflow, and we have to start randomly placing the mobs, we never actually add anything to place plus equals one. So we have to add one here, and that should solve the problem. It's weird how we got through the entire process without encountering this issue. <laughs> okay, and that's a cube aside. Perfect. Okay, so that's solved that problem. Um, okay, but I am still not entirely, um, entirely happy with the way the chests are being placed. Let me let me explain what I mean. I don't like how the chests are at, next to the wall. I don't feel that's a good place. That doesn't seem epic. That doesn't seem interesting, right? It doesn't seem like, ah, oh, that's this chest. Like, this is an important, like, this is a really great chest spawn, by the way, like, immediately at the beginning of the level. And yet, it's kind of like, feels a bit like, oh, it's like they're in a, in a, like tucked into a corner. So something we can do here is we, we want to make sure that it's actually not spawned at the edges of the room. It's never spawned at the edges of the room. Um, so it's something like plus one and minus two. Like so. So the when the chests are spawning, they're always like more central. And it doesn't have to be like perfectly in the center of the room. Like it's generally like just not, not at, at the edge of the room. Where's the chest? Oh, I think it's over there in the corner. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, that's good. So this the, this makes the chest looks a bit more interesting, I think. The, the spawn the spawn of the chest, like they seem like the, the point of the entire room. They seem like more like, okay, this is this is the this is the big deal now. Um okay. So far so good. Um now let me let us now expand this so not just one chest gets placed, but multiple chests gets placed. Um so we're gonna have to change the spawn chest function here. Let me see how what I, what kind of crazy shenanigans I was up to last time around when I placed the chests. So we're gonna do the following here. We, um, we not just have the the R pot, but we're also gonna have chest dice. That's gonna be just an array full of the different possibilities of what kind of how many chests we can have in our room. And um, we can do explode var here. Um, so this is going to be one. What kind of chest dice do I have last time around? I I was mean, and I I previously I was like I had zero sometimes. Sometimes you just don't get any dice, uh, which is a bit mean, uh, and um, don't don't get any chests, which I think is a bit mean. Sometimes you get two chests, sometimes you get three chests. So generally, um, the average is above one. But sometimes you get zero. You get sometimes you 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 get like host, which I think is okay. Let's see how that works out, and then um, then we're gonna have something like place. How many we have to place? Do they call it place? Yeah, and then we're gonna go place equals get rind chest dice. So in getting a random value from the chest dice, and again this would be the the moment where you would maybe modify this, this This will define, you know, how many chests we were going to have. Mm, and then here, this entire process, we're going to go... No, no, this is not here. This is this is the rooms. Here we're replacing this. We're going to do um, while um, place is greater than zero, do... And at the end, how do... What's that again? Uh, it's just like an end. Okay, so now we're repeating this process and every time we place one, we're gonna go place minus equals one. Um, oh yeah, and then also we're deleting the room from the pot. So we're gonna go del uh, r pot r. So we're not spawning multiple chests in the same room. That kind of makes sense, right? <clears throat> oh, and then place equals one or because maybe we run out of rooms, that's possible, right? So, or um, uh, r pot, hashtag r pot equals zero. 
No, oh, no, wait, that's that's wrong. Um, there's a, a place great why because this is while, so the output has to be greater than zero as well. But there's still some kind of problem. Uh, global explode var. Did I call it explode val? Val, most right, var. Yeah, that's good. So now we see three chests spawning here, and that's not what we wanted for some reason. Uh, four chests, I mean. There now we have four chests in this. This is not good. Um, ah, both have to be true. So I think we got host here because this is, I think, one of the rooms where, one of the options where no dice spawn. Or is there one? No, there's no. Okay, so this was bad luck immediately. Okay. Okay, we got one. I feel like something is wrong here. There's two now. There's one. There's one. There's one. Okay. That was some really bad rolls, I think. You get so many. Okay, there's one. There's one. That's good. There's one. Okay, that feels better now. I think we just got like incredibly unlucky on the first run. <laughs> okay, but you can see now how a multiple chests spawn. Okay, this is good. And so finally, um, I want to the first chest that spawns will be the big chest, but then the following chests are going to be the small chests. Um, so let's do something like we're gonna call this um, our pot. Let's call this rare. And that's gonna be true. That's a rare chest. Um, and then place chests are rare. And then a rare equals false. And here we're gonna have rare as a as we're gonna get an argument from this, and we're gonna be like if rare then else and we probably could use a ternary here, right? That's how it works. You guys let me know. You you ternary freaks out there, let me know how I could use ternary here. So it's this, so this gets a bit more. This doesn't look. Uh, we don't waste as much many tokens here. So the less rare chests are the ten. One chest, big chest. Now we have the big chest and the smaller and two smaller chests. Now we have one big chest. Two smaller chests and one big chest. One big chest. It's surprising how, how often you don't get just one chest, but actually multiple ones. Perfect. So this is working so far. Uh, now the only th for, uh, th for thing for us left to do is to actually come up with, um, with the item pools I was talking about earlier. Okay, so this is going to be a bit compl complicated. So mm, mm, I'm not sure if this is a good idea, but let's 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 see. So this was how I had it last time around, and that's how, how we're going to do this. So first we're going to make pool, make eye pool. This is going to be we're going to create two item pools: one with normal items and one with rare items. Rare items are going to be items that are um, weapons or armor. And the idea is we're going to do those pools is because we want to. Uh, we want to spawn each pool just once, uh, each item just once. We don't want to repeat item spawns. So rare and common, okay? And so now we're going to loop through all of the items. So for i equals one to hashtag item underscore name. It doesn't matter which one of the arrays of the items we're going to take. And, and then we're going to go local um, t equals and then we're gonna grab the type. Um, that's how we call it, item type. Mm -hmm. Item type i. And so if t equals um, web or t equals arm, that's how we call them, arm and web, right? Web, 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 and arm, that's good. 
then we add these to the pools. So then else and um, so we're gonna add this to the to this pool. Add uh, I pool rar i and I pool com common com. And this is something we're gonna do when we enter the first floor. I think, or when we start the game, that's something that we could do at the very start of the game. Uh, we generate all of the, all of the items. Uh, let's see. Um, where, where is a good place to do this? Uh, let's do like immediately after equipment. That seems good. Make I pull the item pools for this game. These are the item pools that we can have for this entire game. But that's not going to be enough because what we then want to have is like an item pool not for the entire game but just for this floor that we are currently at so um sadly we have to invest uh, some more effort into this we're going to create an, an array of items that may spawn on this on this floor um where is it mobs items there we go why is it so we're gonna go i'm gonna call this function make floor i pool fee, fee pool and it's going to be also have like two two um arrays uh, except it's not going to be i pool but it's going to be phi pool um and so first we're going to go for i in all i pool we're going to go through all of the item pools uh from from all the rare items do and we're gonna check if uh, ITM uh, min floor, the minimum floor of this item, if this item belongs in on this floor. And then let's let me let me uh, tease this out into multiple lines. Max f is greater than. And what else? Is there something else that we need to check for? No, that's it. So if this item belongs on this floor, we're gonna add this to this pool. To the pool of this floor. And then we're gonna do the same process with the common items. And we're gonna create a common um, the common pool, the, the pool for common items for this floor. So this is the idea here. And we're gonna do these things. We're gonna create the item floor, uh, the floor item pools when we enter a floor. So that's gonna be a gen on the very top. Gen floor, there it is. So yeah, that's generally here. Mm -hmm. Like this. And then, Note that the, by the way, now now we have like created this nice solution where um, on the lowest floor the item pool is actually empty. Is that so the case? Actually, we can make this. Let's make it just like this. Uh, floor. There we go. We don't need it in here. Let's see if this even works. Good. So why are we doing this? So the idea here is that we, um, for the common items, it's going to be very easy. We're just going to do a get rind um, fee pool com, and that will just give us an, a random number uh, item that belongs in this floor. That 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 is is fine. I think most of the um, common items aren't in floor restricted. Oh, they are. The the throwing uh, knives are I think a little bit restricted. Um. But for the rare items, we're going to have to actually have a um, special function that will get us an item, a rare item, and will actually remove it from both pools. So this item may no longer spawn once we get it once. Because I don't want us to have like a thousands of copies of the same sword. I want, if you get a sword, that sword not going to spawn anymore. So we're going to do something like get etm rar. That's not, not going to be the most exciting function name. Uh, and we're going to go if... Um, people are because it might be empty equals zero then else <clears throat> uh, 
And if it's um, if it's empty, we are not going to get a rare item. We instead going to return as a common item. We get rind fee pool com. Right. And if we're getting the rare items, then we're going to go like, okay, we're going to go local item equals get. We're going to use the same function here. We're going to generate a random item. Um, but this time rare. We're going to grab a rare item from the common, from the rare item pool for this floor. And then we're going to delete this item from both of the pools, from the common and from the uh, from the floor uh, rare pool and from the global item pool. So again, the floor item pool is something that generates every floor, that regenerates every floor. We kind of like look through all of the items that are available and assemble a, a item pool for this floor. And the, um, the, the item pool in general is like the item pool for the entire game. So the game keeps track of which weapons uh, have been already um, uh, dropped on the, on the floors. Okay, and then um, get rent for pool, and that's good. And then um, we are going to, when we're going to actually get the items, we are going to um, draw from these pools. So just because I always forget the name of this, I'm going to grab this, and then we're going to go to the gameplay. And we're going to see of, um, about the chests, about the interaction with the chests. So here's the chest. Um, so... So first we're going to see if there is space. Um, so we're going to go if a free items in slot is um, equal to zero, then that means there is no space. Um, else, okay, this means we can do stuff. And in, in, if we don't have any space, we're going to show a message that t displays, okay, um, what kind of message did I do last time around? I, I had some kind of cool message. Well, it doesn't cool, but it was make sense. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, that's good. Show, show message inventory full, 420 in two seconds, it's fine. And that's going to be solve our problem. Then, then the chest has not been opened, and also that means ah, here's the problem. Um, it also means that we shouldn't um, we shouldn't we should skip AI. I think something like this. So we're not gonna. So we can't use a full like a full inventory as a way to generate uh, to fix uh, priority. Okay, and otherwise we uh, okay we delete it. But then um, the important part is here. We're gonna get an item here, um, and this time around it's not gonna be a random. So it kind of it depends on what kind of tile we're at. So if if TLE equals ten, then else and I'm gonna create the yeah. Or actually, yeah, let's let's do something like this. We're gonna grab a random common item because the common items are not destructive. Like we can generate common items. Um, they, they should like re the common items are not getting used up. You're not, never removing common items from the pool. Um, so we can do this to get a common num uh, item first. And then if you realize, oh, wait a minute, that's actually a rare chest, then we can generate a different item. So let's do something like this. Okay, so now we generated a a common item, and then if the chest is rare, so that means the chest is 12, then we can overwrite this with a rare number. So it's going to go item equals, and now the now comes the get item rare. So this is gets us the rare item. And everything else stays the same. Um, I would maybe here add an exclamation point because it's funny, I think. Okay. That should take care of the chests. And while we're here, I'm going to also make sure that the um, these guys, the 
the pots also give us a um, a common item, not a rare item. Uh, here is maybe something, again, we have to make sure that we're, if we're full. So here's a bit of an issue because when we are full, um, we still want to destroy the pot. Um, so, um, yeah. But we're not gonna cancel in this case. So we're just gonna destroy the pot and it's like the item is lost. It's a common item either way. So it doesn't, it's not really that bad if it's lost. It's just like you, you goofed up. Um, else and okay something along those lines um, there's one issue that I have Yeah, um, generally you know, something that we have to also keep in mind is um, I, in my prototype I did, I did this stuff a little differently. Um, I did it so that um, I actually had a map, uh, actually saved it during procedural generation, during the when generation of the level, that's when I saved the items. I had like actually an array that remembered which items were placed on the map. Um, now this is, is sold differently, so it will generally work. The, the game will work worked or differently. I think there is going to be a higher chance for uh, items from lower um, floors to show up in higher floors and so forth. The reason why I did it differently in a prototype is I wanted to initially to have it so I can have a daily challenge. So using a certain seed, I will always get the same sequence of levels. Mm. But um, I usually then I eventually re realized that this was a bit too ambitious, so I kind of left that part off, um, and so that that that's how I can we can make it now work like this. So let's see if, if breaking those vases. Oh, there's a problem here. Uh, yeah. So here's the problem that um, the vases only get should get items if, if the floor is bigger than than one. So let's see. Ah, interesting. So last time around, this was a side effect of the way I generated those things. Okay, so I guess in this case, we're just gonna do something like, um, here, if uh, the chance is greater and floor is greater than zero. <laughs> so we're not getting items from these vases. Okay, so let's let's see if we can get an item from this chest. We got food one. So let's see what kind of item is in this chest. A spork. Oh, I pressed the button to skip to the next level. Ah, oh, man, I wanted to see what what was in there. Let's try this again. Okay, now there is just one item on this floor. Let's fix our priority. Okay, there's an issue here. Um, uh, we got a nil. Or at least the um, item name ITM it was nil. So it seems like we haven't returned the right number uh, item. Oh yeah, we haven't returned it. That's good. Paper apron, apron, and now we can, oh man, I pressed the button again, oh, but I still can wear the paper. Oh no, <laughs> I'm pressing the wrong button. Okay, so now I can equip this and it gives me one defense. So let's see what other item we have in, in stock for us. Oh, this actually, I'm, mm, I'm in over my head because these monsters, I think, do a lot of damage. Oh, actually, I got defense, it's good. Well, I think there's like, there's like, oh, I'm gonna get killed by these guys. I'm gonna get out of here. Because I skipped a bunch of, oh, I think now this, this, this game might be actually not, not winnable for me. Okay, let's restart the game. I want to find an item in a vase. Oh no, I pressed the button again. No. <laughs> okay, let, let's let's uh, let's see if we can generate a level that has a vase in it. Okay, there's some vases there. And also a regular chest, that's good. 
Okay, food one. I've been robbed. I've been clearly I've been robbed. Come on, give me a, give me something in a vase. Spork, yes. Hmm, the percentages are not not really favorable. So maybe we're gonna crank this up a little bit. So maybe we're gonna get, go like three. So let's see how that works. But also something I want to do at this point is okay. So if we getting a an item in a vase. I want sometimes to have a nasty surprise. So we're gonna go if R and D five is smaller than one, then it will spawn a monster, and otherwise we're gonna get the item and everything. So how do? We, oh man, that seems complicated. How do we spawn a monster? It's easy. It's easy. We're just gonna go. Basically, we're just gonna add the mob, right? So we're gonna go, um, wait a minute, where is it? How are we spawning the mobs again? There is here, spawn mobs, infest room. Let's go to infest room, yeah. We're gonna get this guy out. Add mob, uh, we're gonna get run from a mob pool, which still persists, and we're just gonna put it in dest x, dest y. So it will spawn a random mob from our mob pool. Let me see. Give me a room with a lot of vases. Okay, there's some vases in here. That's a lot of mobs in this room, by the way. Ah, there was a mob in there. <laughs> okay, I, I was unlucky. In, I guess I was lucky or unlucky, depending on how, how you think about this. Cool. So um, this was it. We are spawning now items. So I'm not sure exactly what we're gonna do in the next episode. Um, I think there is, um, yeah, we, there's maybe some gameplay features that we maybe want to implement. So um, I was talking about stuff like um, um, uh, stun. Um, also, uh, I want to maybe randomize the names of the uh, the foods that will be maybe fun to, to look at. So yeah, these are going to be like the kind of the next steps to, to do. Uh, for now, again, uh, there is uh, the code for this is going to be down in the doobly doo, and uh, you can um, visit our Discord channel where you can meet the beautiful people thinking about this game and talking about this game and sh showing their own uh, creations that you should definitely check out. See you next episode, guys. Bye bye.